Encounter is brought to you by the Broome County Council of Churches, where we connect compassion with needs as we inspire growth with dignity. You'll find us in special places throughout the community. For those who remain hungry, we provide meals. For those who are challenged, we build wheelchair ramps. We comfort those who are ill, minister to those who are confined, and we remain an advocate for change and understanding on behalf of every element of our community. Connect and inspire. Encounter the Broome County Council of Churches. Good morning and welcome to Encounter. I'm your host today, Joe Selipak, the Executive Director at the Council of Churches. August 12th seems like a long time ago, but that was the date that, Char that Charlottesville, um, Virginia, um, was inundated by white supremacist neo-Nazis as well as counter-protesters that gathered to talk about what was happening in a park in that area when the Robert E. Lee statue was going to be taken down. Um, many of the protests turned violent um, and it resulted in the death of a, of a young woman. Her name was Heather Heyer. Heather was slammed into by a white supremacist who was driving a car through a group of protesters. 20 people were injured. She lost her life. And it really brought to light how violent and how, um, how dangerous that situation was. At the same time as that was happening, there was a group of clergy who were, had gathered inside of a, um, inside of a church and white nationalists had surrounded the church and the clergy were praying. And there, there's this picture that I, I still remember today of a, of a black girl in, a, in the arms of a bishop. The bishop was holding this black girl and the girl was shaking and uh, very terrified. They were thinking that their life was in danger. A group of Virginia students put themselves between the protesters, at this point, national, white nationalists, and the group of clergy that were inside of the building. They opened with their bodies a way for the clergy to get through, it, through that group mm -hmm. back into the streets safely. Many of those students were clubbed, were hurt, and their injur injuries were not life-threatening. However, they did, they were, um, they were traumatized uh, just because of, of what they, doing what they felt was right at the time. Today is um, World Communion Sunday. And I thought that it would be interesting for us to begin to talk about, well, how do we move forward from some of these issues, especially the issues around white nationalism, white supremacy? So what do you think? What are, what are, where does this, this white supremacy, white nationalism, neo-Nazi kind of ideology, where, where does it come from and why, why do you think it's, in, um, it, it's, it's active today? It comes from our uh, long and, and intentional history of building a society where black people are valued less than white people in our ideology, in the way that we tell history, in the conversations we have. Um, and why it's rearing its head now is that we're given permission again as white people by leadership at a national level that makes it okay to say hateful things and to practice open discrimination. It seems like um, my guest today is Kimberly Chastain. She's the senior pastor at United Presbyterian Church in Binghamton. And uh, my guest today on Encounter, thank you for being on Encounter today, Kimberly. Glad to be here. So um, the, one of the things that they, that they, clo they, they, they hide behind it at times is free speech. Mm -hmm. they, they say that we can, we're, it's, it's okay for us to do hate-filled rhetoric, to call for the, um, the death of Jewish people of black people, of Muslims, of any number of people. And then they say, well, you know, it's all protected speech. Yeah, protected <laughs> speech doesn't mean you get to say whatever you want without consequences. It means that the government should not be impeding your right to say what you believe. 
the rest of society has a right to disagree with you and has a right to resist mm -hmm. hate speech and to bring consequences that will affect what people do and say that's hateful. And right. we as Christians, we as white Christians have an obligation to be actively and publicly saying this is not who we are called to be. We must resist at every turn anything that denigrates people created in the image of God, even as we are. Right. And it, it would, so that, that's one of the criticisms that's often leveled at, um, at Muslims, for instance, when a minority of Muslims begin to act out of violence and they, they do terroristic, event, um, terroristic um, um, acts, but then, then, they, um, then the, the moderate Muslims or the people who are calling for peace, the people who are calling for community are often criticized because they don't speak out. Um, and even though they are speaking out, they're just not heard. Right. So in this, in this event, you know, um, there were white Christians who were denouncing what was going on within the white nationalist group. And those voices, those voices sometimes are silenced be behind the other ones because they're carrying guns, they're carrying torches, they're KKK people. You know, it, it just seems, seems as if um, sometimes it, it, you know, the, the, the voices of moderation and peace don't get the same, the same, um, the same level of, of, of notoriety, so to speak. Well, I also think um, that we as white people have never really reckoned with the way we are educated and placed in a system that makes us po it possible for us individually to have all the warm, fuzzy feelings in the world. We don't have to feel any hate or hostility toward people of color and toward international uh, guests in our country to participate in a system that creates harm. All we have to do is be nice individually and reap <laughs> the benefits without ever calling into question how these things came about. Right. And that needs to change because the average American makes a dollar for every five cents that an African American in this country makes for a living wage. Averages are always in some ways a falsehood, but it's very telling that when we call ourselves middle class, we mean something very different than someone who is in the black community means when they say that. And trying to create a false equivalence between how we are raised and educated and the opportunities we get overlooks the fact that none of us who start in this country with the visuals that you and I have are at a disadvantage in the ways that people who have more melanin than we do have because people see them differently, respond to them differently. They don't start out with the cultural capital and they don't start out with the ability to walk into a situation and be accepted as who they are. Now, as far as, as, far as white nationalism is concerned, this has always been an interesting idea for me because uh, for a long time, Eastern Europeans were never considered to be white. Mm -hmm. Same thing with Irish people, same thing with, you know, the, the only people that were really considered to be white were wasps, wasps, white, white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, and they were considered to be, to be, um, to be white. Then as, the, as, as time went on, Irish people became white, um, uh, Italian people became white, Catholics became white. I became white, you know, I'm, I'm also almost all Eastern European. I mm -hmm. got a little Jewishness inside of me, which kind of throws everybody for a loop too. But then, you know, you end up with, you end up, you end up with all these other categorical kinds of imperatives that, that, that basically say, okay, we are now, we, we now, it's okay for, because you look, you look the part. But you know, you, like, like you sug suggested, if you have too much melanin inside of your, inside of your, um, your DNA, well then, you know, um, um, then, then these people don't somehow measure up and they're not, a, 
that they're not welcomed into into the the larger the larger community in that kind of a way from from the white nationalist perspective. So as far as as far as neo Nazis, white nationalists, the KKK, and these these alternate right groups, mm -hmm. um, what where do where do so where did they come from? I mean, because part, part of the issue is that this, that this group, these groups have always been a part of the, white, the, the fabric of the United States. They have not been, they have not been, um, they, it's not a recent phenomenon. These have been going on for a long time. So where, where actually do they come from? They come from a... Um, an ideology specifically um, that says that we r retain our privilege by the ability to create a, a world in which on site we can judge others and we can esteem them to be lower than we are. You know, the famous, the famous quote that, that you can um, convince the poorest white man that he has more worth than the richest black man. Um, and then you'll be able to keep everybody separate. That's not part of the quote, but that's right. where I go from there. And the separation then keeps people in competition with each other. And the ones who benefit are the ones who have access to the resources and the media. And, and part, of the, part of the struggle, though, is that the, the poor white person you know, we, we often, and, and the poor black person within the city, you know, so we, we say the median income of white people is higher than, mm -hmm. higher than, um, higher than the median income of, of black people. But if you were to go into areas of Appalachia, go into areas, uh, the areas that really supported the current regime as far as the, the presidency is concerned, the, go into um, even areas of um, uh, urban, Exurban areas too, where where poverty is really high. Those places are going to have a, a high percentage of white poverty, huge percentages of white poverty, and and those people are are mis are, are misguided that somehow their race is going to somehow save them. You look where a lot of the neo Nazis come from. They come from that group of of people. Interestingly, though. In Charlottesville, particularly, and in other areas, we're not seeing the neo-Nazi leadership coming from that demographic. Where we're seeing it is in the young middle-class white male. Right. Well, the and the reason we don't see the women is because women, in the ideology, are supposed to take a back seat. Right. But the assumption that somehow it's the underprivileged who are being manipulated to work against themselves obscures the fact that these were college students coming to Charlottesville to express their sense of superiority and their frustration in a world where there's real loss of status because of the economy. Well, and, they, and they're relegated to, they, they don't have the lifestyle that their parents did. That's they right. They have a job in, a, in Starbucks or they have a job in... Um, X, Y, you know, any number of uh, service industries. But if you've got an ideology that privileges power and says that if you're good enough, you will be wealthy and powerful, then the only place to express your frustration is to people who are beneath you on the economic ladder and have fewer, a less access to um, resources and to social mobility than you do. So instead of focusing energy and attention where it belongs at the people who are controlling the narrative, who are telling the story on the media, and the people who have the money to, make, to influence uh, not only elections but educational systems and